In my opinion, Ralph Tyler is one of the greatest educational figures. He left a legendary impact on policy, evaluation, testing, and curriculum development. He was born in April 1902 in Chicago, Illinois. His father, William Tyler, grew up on a farm and he became a doctor but eventually decided to give that up and to go into ministry. Tyler was the sixth of eight children and he used to talk about how he had to trap animals for food and wear donated clothing and he got his first job at the age of 12 at a local creamery. He received his bachelor's degree in 1921 at the age of 19 from Doan College in Nebraska. His first job well, his first teaching job was at a high school as a science teacher in South Dakota. In 1923, Tyler wrote a science test for high school students that helped him see the holes in testing for memorization. He earned his master's degree from the University of Nebraska in 1923 and his PhD from the University of Chicago in 1927. Later in 1927, Tyler joined the faculty at Ohio State University, where he refined his innovative approach to testing while working with Charters, who was the director of the university's Bureau of Educational Research. Tyler helped Ohio State University to improve their teaching and increase student retention. Because his concept of evaluation consisted of gathering comprehensive evidence of learning rather than just paper and pencils tests, Tyler might even be viewed as an early proponent of portfolio assessment. Tyler headed the evaluation staff of the eight-year study, a national program involving 30 secondary schools and 300 colleges and universities that addressed the narrowness in high school curriculum. He first gained prominence in 1938 when he was lured by Robert Hutchins from Ohio State University to the University of Chicago to continue his work there. In 1953, Tyler became the first director of the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences at Stafford University, Stanford University, I apologize, a position he held into his retirement in 1967. A decade after completing his work with the eight-year study, Tyler formalized his thoughts on viewing, analyzing, and interpreting the curriculum and instructional program of an educational institute in basic, basic principles of curriculum and instruction. This book was a bestseller and has been reprinted in 36 editions, shaping curriculum and instructional design to this day. Tyler advised President Truman on reforming the curriculum at the service and academies in 1952 and under Eisenhower. He chaired the president's conference on children and youth. The Johnson administration used Tyler's advice to shape many of its educational bills and programs. Tyler was named founding director of the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences in 1954 and held that position through 1967. The center was originally envisioned as a five-year project, but later became an ongoing independent institution that would eventually claim to have supported over 2,000 leading scientists and scholars. As a member of the governing board, Tyler is credited with playing a critical role in determining the character of a center as a new type of educational institution. In 1964, the Carnegie Corporation asked Tyler to chair the committee that would eventually develop the NAEP in 1969, which is the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Before this time, Tyler wrote, no comprehensive and dependable data about the educational attainments of our young people were available. Ralph Tyler also contributed to educational agencies such as the National Science Board, the Research and Development Panel of the U.S. Office of Education, the National Advisory Council on Disadvantaged Children, the Social Science Research Foundation, the Armed Forces Institute, and the American Association for the Advanced of Advancement of Science. Ralph Ta Tyler also served the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development and helped publish its fundamental curriculum decisions in 1983. Tyler formally retired in 1967 from the Center for advanced study, but he later became president of the System Development Foundation in San Francisco in 1969, 
which supported basic research in information sciences. He was on the National Advisory Council on Education for Disadvantaged Children, a panel study SAT scores, and was also the Chairman on Exploratory Committee on Assessing Progress on Education. After his retirement, Tyler maintained an active life as a lecturer and consultant. He was a visiting professor at the University of Massachusetts, and he advised on evaluation and curriculum in many countries, including Indonesia, Ireland, Israel, and Sweden. Tyler passed away of cancer at the age of 91 in February 18, on February 18, 1994, at the St. Paul's Health Center in San Diego, California, but not until leaving a lasting impact on education throughout his life for many years to come. Thank you.